If you have a website or an API that you need to make sure is always up and running, chances are you want to have an automated system do it for you. Google Cloud has a service called Uptime Checks, which can do exactly that. I'm going to show you what it does, how it works, and how to set it up. So let's jump in and get started. In one of my previous videos, I showed how when I write APIs, I always include a controller that I can use to make status checks. I've taken the API from that video and I've deployed it to Google Cloud Run. And let's just imagine that I wanna make sure that this API is always up and running. So let's jump over into Google Cloud Console and I'll show you how you can set that up. First thing you wanna do is make sure you're in the right project. And then once you are, you can go to the navigation menu and go to monitoring. And if you don't have monitoring in your navigation menu, you can always search for it up here. And then once you're in monitoring, go to uptime checks. And you can see here that I've already got one test check set up. And so before I show you how to set one up, I'll show you how this is working and what kind of data it shows you. And I set this test up about an hour ago, but you can see here that my uptime is 100%. My average latency is 122 milliseconds. And it shows the current status for the different regions all across the globe. And then down here, it shows how many checks have passed for each region. And then at the bottom, it shows a graph of latency for each request. And the one really cool thing about uptime checks is that I have it set up right now so that it's only monitoring that one status endpoint. However, it's being called from multiple places across the globe. And that's what this chart is showing is the latency for each one of those locations. And so my Google Cloud instance is running in US Central 1, and this graph is showing you the latency coming from these different locations. A request coming from Iowa, which is on the same region, is taking 27 milliseconds. And then Virginia is about 48. And so the great thing about this is you can come into this dashboard and you can look at this and you can see if there's any issues with any of your applications. Another really cool thing about this is you can set alerting policies. I'll get into this a little bit more when I show you how to set this up, but I have it set up so that if this is failing, it will send me an email and let me know that that service is down. Let's go ahead and create an uptime check. So I'll go back and I'll say create uptime check. There are a few different ways that you can set up these checks and there are a few different things that you can check with it. The first thing you select is the protocol. In this example, I'm just gonna do HTTPS and then you select the resource type. And in my case, my service is running in Cloud Run. So I could either choose a Cloud Run service or I could just call it by the URL. I'll show you how to do both. Some of these other options, for example, Kubernetes, App Engine, Instance, I haven't actually used those myself, but I would assume they work almost the exact same way as when you set up for a URL. So first I'll choose URL, and then I'm going to paste in the host name and then the path, which is going to be API slash status. And then you can set the frequency. I'll go ahead and just say one. You can choose here what you think is best for your system, and it kind of depends on how critical that system is to you. And if all this looks good, you can go ahead and continue from here, but there are other target options that I wanna show. And this gives you a bunch more options. You can do a ping, you can change the type of the request, you can do a get or a post. And if you want to, you can change headers and ports. You can even add custom headers. So one example of a custom header that you might wanna use is for authentication. If I go into Swagger and I go down to the status page for auth, this auth call is expecting an authorization header. So if I wanted to, I could add an authorization header here and give it whatever value I want. And then that way I can do my authentication check this way. But for now, I'm gonna leave those blank. You can also tell it to validate your SSL certificate. And the way Cloud Run works is it automatically sets up SSL certs for you. But if you're gonna use this to check something that's not running in Cloud Run, maybe you have your own certificates, you can set this up to check for that as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and say continue. Okay, and this section is about validating the response. So the first field is the timeout. I'm gonna leave it at 10 seconds. So I'll say if it, as long as it takes less than 10 seconds to respond, then it's successful. And then you can decide whether or not you want to check for specific content in your response. So in my case, all I wanna make sure is that I get back a 200, but if I go back into Swagger again and I run this, the message I get back says all good. So let's just imagine for a second that I give back different messages depending on the status of different things inside of this check. Well, if I wanted to check for all good, I could do that if I wanted to. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and I'll just show this to you just to give you an example of what it looks like. So I could just say that I wanna make sure that it contains all good, or I could also set it up to match a certain regex. One other option is the JSON path. And if I wanted to do this, the JSON path for mine would be, I believe it would be dot message. And then I can say, I want it to exactly match all good. So again, I don't really care about that. I just wanna make sure I get back a 200. So I'm actually just gonna turn that back off. And then you tell it whether or not you want it to log the failures. And so this would log any of your failures into the logging service in Google Cloud. 
And then you tell it what the acceptable response code is. If you leave it as classes, then you can tell it that any 200 is acceptable. But let's just say, for example, that I only want it to accept 200s. You can do that as well, or a 201, for example. So I'm gonna put mine back on response code classes, and I'm going to say any 200 response is successful. And then click continue. And this section is about alerting and notification. And so you can have this uptime check just run in the background and do its thing and not let you know if anything goes down. And then you can see that graph that I was showing you on the dashboard. But generally, if your service goes down, you probably wanna know about it. You can set this up to automatically alert you if something is failing. So here you can put in a name. I'll just leave it as uptime failure. And this duration field is how long it has to fail before it will alert you. And so let's say, for example, that it's checking every minute, but you only care if it's going to fail three times in a row, for example. So you could set that to three minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and put it as the most recent value. So if it fails once, alert me right away. And then you choose the notification channel. You can see here that I have an email already set up, but if you don't have any notification channel set up, you can click here to say manage notification channels, and that will open up a new tab for you where you can set up your notifications. And in here, there's different options. You can have it go to PagerDuty services, to a Slack channel, you can have it go to any webhook, you can have it go to a specific email or text messages or to Google's PubSub service. For example, if you wanna add a new email, just click add new, put in the address and the display name, and then go back to your uptime check. And if you click the refresh button, it should show up here for you. Go ahead and select the notification that you want, click okay, and then continue. And then last, it's just a review. So here you can put in the title for what your check is. You can add some key value pairs if you want for labels. And then you can click test and this will just do one really quick test and validate that it's still working. And so you can see it responded with a 200 okay and it took 57 milliseconds. And I just realized I forgot something. Um, if I go back into the target section, um, I didn't cover this regions here. These regions are the regions that the request is going to be coming from. And so by default, it chooses global. And so if you don't want all of those, you can uncheck global and then you can choose any of these three. So you do have to always have th at least three of them selected though. Now I'll go back to review and then you can just double check everything here on the right side in the summary and everything looks good. So then I'll go ahead and click create. And now you have an uptime check set up that is going to run every minute. It's going to send requests from all over the globe and it's going to make sure that your service is up and running. And if any of those requests fail, you can have it alert you. And I truly think that a service like this is pretty invaluable if you have a service that needs to be up and running all the time. I've used this service for myself and I've also used something like this for my day job. And I can tell you that it's very awesome when you get an email or some type of alert saying that your service is down and you can go in and check it and fix it before your customers even know what's going on. And it also sounds cool if a customer calls you and says, hey, I'm having issues, and you go, yep, I'm already working on it. So it just really makes you look good. <laughs> and after a couple minutes, when that has run a couple times for you, you can go in and check it. And you can see here that I've got 100% uptime, and you can see the latency coming from all the different regions. I do wanna go back and show you how to configure this to point to a specific Cloud Run instance. And I'll just do a new one. If you change this to Cloud Run Service, it will actually list all of the Cloud Run services in this project. Make sure you choose HTTPS. And then just like with the URL, you add in the path. So slash API slash status. And then everything from here on is the same. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And if there's something obvious that I missed or something I didn't quite do right, please let me know down below as well. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.